Well, you family, to book cheap last minute flights can sometimes be confusing and seem impossible. When I need to book cheap domestic flights in the USA, there are about 10 good tips and tricks that I use that can sometimes save me a couple of hundred bucks. This week on Passport Kings, I'm sharing that information with you. Engage. Travel is my passion, passion, passion. PassportKings.com Your travel lifestyle will never be the same again. My name is Rock Lynn. I'm a travel enthusiast and travel advisor who makes videos to inform, review, and see if I can get you as excited about travel as I am. If this is a topic you like, consider subscribing to Passport Kings and ringing the bell so you can be the first in the know when I upload new content. When I want to book cheap last minute flights in USA, there are some tricks that I've picked up along the way. They are not rocket science or quote unquote secrets. But there are some ways to fly throughout the USA and save a lot more money than the passengers sitting right next to you. Of course, the best way to get the cheapest flights is to plan way in advance. But as we all know, sometimes that is not an option. A lot of times in my travel business, I won't even book a flight for a client for the next day, for instance, because I know they will be getting a shocking sticker price. On the last few days before takeoff, flight prices can be double to triple to what you would have paid if you would have just booked the ticket a week in advance. But when you're in the pinch and just need to book cheap last minute flights, these are some of the ways I suggest you wind up with a reasonable price. Number 10, check with Frontier or Spirit, or if you're in Europe, use EasyJet. These fares are best when traveling alone. You can save hundreds of dollars with these airlines when you book cheap last minute flights. These carriers generally have a bad reputation and some is deserved, but some isn't. If your goal is to get from point A to point B by air, Frontier and Spirit is the way to go. If you need to be pampered, wined, and dined while you're in the air for a few hours, you probably should gather up more money and look somewhere else. The downsides of using these below economy fares is when you're with a party of two or more. You may not sit together. The seats are assigned for you at the gate. Some, and I do mean some gate agents or passengers on the plane, may have mercy on you and let you and your family sit together, but that's a total gamble. Usually you can pay extra to choose your seat, but that may run the price right back up to what you were trying to avoid paying. The seats are not very comfortable, especially on Frontier. They seem to be made out of lightly cushioned plastic. Also, these airlines will charge extra for bags. If you get caught up at the door of one of these planes trying to get luggage on that's bigger than the sizes that you agreed on when choosing all of the cheapest options possible, they will make you pay, and the luggage at the gate will cost a lot more than what you would have paid if you would have just ordered the luggage online. Also, their luggage prices is a lot more than what you would have paid on other airlines. People who complain about these budget options are usually themselves to blame for what they are mad about. Everything they expect from you is written out in plain English. If you choose not to read it, that does not mean that it was hidden fine print. It just means that you may have been trying to get over on them. Pack as light as you can and don't expect anything extra and your flight will be just fine. Number nine, be flexible on dates and destinations. Check to see if you book a one-way ticket in each direction or check if another close departure city is cheaper to fly out of. I live in Atlanta, so that's not really possible to do because we only have one major large airport. But most cities in the USA has additional airports that are not that far away from each other. Some airports have higher landing fees. So if the airport is 30 to 50 miles away from your home city, it may be cheaper to just drive or Uber first to either a smaller or larger airport in the city and land in another city. Also, see if a round trip ticket may be cheaper. It just may. And of course, book as many days in advance as possible. I know that's probably impossible if you're in this situation. When you're in the booking engine, check if one day before or one day after your trip would make things cheaper. Most booking engines will highlight that leaving a day before or a day after will cost you less. Number eight, work in the business or become friends with and or marry a pilot or flight attendant. If you're married to a flight attendant or pilot, in most cases, you will get the same employee benefits that they get. If you are just friends with one, the buddy passes which are not as flexible are still great. Just understand that you will be on standby. Meaning that if a flight is about to take off and they're not full, then they'll let you on. Most times you will still have to pay for a fraction of the gas being used on that plane and sometimes international fees that everyone on the plane paid. Just remember that flying this way takes a lot of patience and sometimes you need pure luck. Most importantly, you need to not catch an attitude with gate agents if things don't go your way. 
you can wind up getting the person who gave you that benefit in a lot of trouble. There are usually plenty of flights going to the same destination you need per day. If you're not caught for the first one, you will need to wait to the next one leaving out. This is best for flying to unpopular destinations on a date that the whole world isn't flying. Because you're going to need the flight to not be full when you get to the airport. If it is, you will be left. If you are currently in a relationship with a woman who is between jobs or hates their job, try to encourage them to fill out an application to become a flight attendant. They will either take it as a compliment and go for it, or they'll just take it as a compliment and ignore you. Either way, they will take it as a compliment. If that doesn't work, maybe you could get a position in the airline industry yourself. Just follow the link that I'm putting above. Number seven, compare different search engines. Of course, I'm going to tell you to check the Passport King's booking engine first. You can find that at rocklandland.intellitravel.com, but also keep an eye on Skyscanner and Mamondo. These services will keep an eye on the skies for you. A tip to add is to remember to erase the cookies in your browser and use incognito mode on Chrome. This may just be a theory, but websites have what's called cookies. Cookies were made so websites could offer you things that they think you would like instead of mental overload and showing you everything under the internet sun. Cookies also have the ability to see what you've been searching for, and if they see that you've been eyeing a vacation in the Bahamas lately, for instance, the cookies will let the booking engines know. The booking engines will then try to make sure they get the most money out of you as possible. Clearing your cookies and using incognito modes limits those cookies' abilities. It will be like you're using your computer for the first time, and the cookies will have no browsing history to reference. And then you'll be more free to book cheap last minute flights. Number six, buy tickets from the airport. I've heard people say that buying tickets from the actual airport counter to get a cheaper price is hit or miss when you want to book cheap last minute flights. I know for a fact that I was able to book cheap last minute flights in person at the counter. I've done it when I flew to Costa Rica, and I've done it when I was going to the Dominican Republic. One person argued me down and told me it was cheaper because I was going international. I've done some research myself and found that not to be true. Airlines have fees called website convenience fees that are added to your ticket price when you purchase tickets online. If you have any old receipts from traveling by air, look at the charges that were included with your price. Some carriers call it CIC, which stands for Carrier Interface Charge. When you physically go down to the airport and buy your ticket, which you should do as far in advance as possible, that CIC fee will not be included with your ticket and the prices will be cheaper. Number five, award stacking, which is sometimes called travel hacking and saves you more money on flights than any other strategy I've heard of. The price of the flight is the number one factor that keeps people going from adventures that they've always dreamed of. You can easily learn the six steps that it would take to cut the time for you to save on vacations in half, sometimes even less than half. And this new link that I'm putting above is a course. In it, you will learn how to make the cheapest bookings possible, saving thousands, insider knowledge on frequent flyer cards and points, how to blow past your spending requirements quickly, how to transform your credit score, double your chances of getting the most beneficial credit cards, eliminate the extra costs and fees so this course will be free, plus many more. The relationship between the credit card companies and airline companies have been so symbiotic that now you can use loopholes to get extraordinary discounts and freebies from both. The program is called Why Not Fly For Free, and they guarantee to teach you those strategies or they'll give you your money back. The number four way to book cheap last minute flights is to type in airline promo codes into Google. Google is still your friend. A lot of people use discount codes when shopping using sites like Retail Me Not and just typing in the word coupon code after the product that they're searching for. This method can sometimes be used for typing in flights and airlines. Now this is really hit or miss but it has worked for some of my subscribers in the past. Try it out on your next flight and remember to put quotation marks around the word coupon code. Quotation marks helps Google, and Google will not show you things that are related, but only show you results that have those exact terms within the quotation marks. Give it a shot. Number three, buy separate tickets from maybe different airlines. If you prefer a first class or business class and the first part of your trip is the long one, like say you're going from New York City to San Diego, there will probably be a connection in LAX. Since the second half of your flight is so short, you can get economy class from LAX to San Diego and probably with a different airline. So the side of booking two tickets in different classes instead of one will make a difference. Make sure to check other airlines when you're choosing this method. Number two, fly on Saturdays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. When airlines are deciding what prices to charge people, they take a lot of information into consideration. One of the main things they look at is how busy flights are on certain days. They will prefer that every flight of every day is full. The truth is, people just don't fly as much on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. 
No one wants to be flying on Saturday morning, afternoon, or evening. You will be able to book cheap last minute flights on Saturdays because the airport and planes are usually a lot more empty than usual. The same principle applies to Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Most vacations are planned from Thursday to Monday. Every vacation spot you visit will be going back to normal work days for the locals on around Monday morning. And it is when most tourists leave. Shifting the vacation accordingly may have you missing one of the best days to be at your destination, but hey, you will save a lot on the airlines when you want to book cheap last minute flights. Now this last way to buy cheap last minute flights is something that I'm totally against you using. I am mentioning it because a lot of people say it's the best way to get cheaper tickets and they're willing to take the risk. I'm not. This method is called Hidden Cities. It's become popular from sites like Skiplag. Airlines has actually sued people using this trick of booking a flight that connects in your real destination. For instance, people would buy a cheap last minute flight from New York to LAX, and that flight would have a layover in Denver. Since the passenger originally only wanted to go to Denver in the first place, the passenger would just leave the airport once they get to Denver and just not tell anyone. Airlines have been cracking down on this hack and even sued some of the passengers that were doing this. The airline wasn't successful in the court ruling. The court said the passenger had breached the contract, however, the airline's dilemma was how much they were seeking for damages. The court couldn't agree with how the airline calculated their fees. Essentially, they pulled the number out of thin air. No pun intended. So the courts ruled that there was no loss to the airlines. I don't know about y'all, but I'm not interested in going to court just to save 100 bucks or so on a flight. Also, it's really impolite to cause a flight delay to other passengers because the crew refuses to close the door because they are too busy trying to find a passenger who seemed to have just disappeared. It's an awful way to book cheap last minute flights and I suggest you beware of that one. Always try to book flights as far in advance as possible. But if that's not possible, book cheap last minute flights using one or more of these options and you will be smooth sailing. And you will be flying as cheap as possible like a king of passport kings. Peace.